All right, everybody. So we're going to jump into a traditional kale time draft. It's been a while since Channel 3 ML Drafts has released any videos, but better late than never. This is a really fun set. There's always one guy doing this. There's always one guy. Or girl, I guess. Yeah. There are ladies out there who do play. There's not as many, but shouldn't assume. Okay, so uh, pack one, pick one. I think this is a no-brainer. Ben Stark calls this the mythic uncommon. I agree. This is this can be very strong in an elf deck, but this works in any deck. Hmm. I do like Narfi. I also like Fearless Liberator. Yeah. I mean, Fearless Liberator can just be a free win sometimes. I mean, Narfi can also win you uh, games, as I guess can any card, but it's just so much easier to get Fearless Liberator going. You need to have way too many things right for Narfi. You need to be two colors, you need to be playing snow, you need to have three untapped snow lands, you need to be in a position where you don't die when he comes back into play tap. Like, I think it's an easy glimpse over uh, Feed the Serpent. I, I don't like black in this format. It's a bit out of place. Like if I open a black rare bomb like uh, Blood in the Snow or something like that that I can build around, then sure. But here it's just an easy glimpse. And with glimpse, of course, I'm more interested in changelings. For green or for blue, if we get Mistwalker, which is one of the best non-spells. Yeah, like what one of the best common creatures. Not as good as Pack Me, but okay, so now there's a bound and goal, but there's also another fearless liberator. There's no reason for me to go into white when there's such a good card for me here. These guys also work great with equipment because you get more value out of the token. Like three for a two one, it's not really a good rate, but when it's free and it doesn't cost you a card, it's very good. All right. So if I'm to take a green card, it's between the Elder Hall and Sculptor. I think I just take a Sculptor. There is a snow covered forest, but I think at this juncture, I'd rather take Sculptor. All right, well, now I'm just going to take Glittering Frost because this is a combo. Mana Acceleration can be very strong in a format that has a lot of good top end. If I can power out my, my six drop on turn four, which this lets you do. You know, Things like that, they, they give your opponent one less turn to find like a removal speller. Uh, it, it, it puts a lot of pressure. You know, also not, not too many creatures with death touch. There's the one three that's, a, that's an uncommon. And uh, there's the two three black flyer. That's a, also an uncommon. So because of um, <clears throat> it's what feels like a lower than typical number of death touchers. Big creatures tend to do a bit better. Also, Center for Giant is not as bad as I initially thought when the set first came out. So now it's between a blue card. We only have Glimpse, which and Glimpse is splashable. There's also a Broken Wings, but I think I can get Broken Wings later. I'm not particularly interested, at least at this time, in either one of these because I'm neither one of these two colors. I guess I can take this in case I drop my three really good green cards or I could potentially splash sure I guess I'll take this does let you scry too which is not completely useless I guess I'm not crazy about this I know it's cute when it works but I'm trying to actually win games snow covered mountain 
pretty straightforward. I find that I think that this format can be a bit confusing for, for newer players because it's not, it doesn't make intuitive sense or it doesn't make sense on an intuitive level to take lands over cards that actually do something. But one thing to keep in mind is, you know, this has been true with many limited formats of the past is you end up with more playables than you need. Like you need to make cuts every time. That's the, you know, first point. Second point is there's so much good fixing you can be three, four, five colors, um, you know, fairly adequately without worrying too much about it. Well, now it's between uh, the elf. It goes better with black. I could take raven wings, raven wings on the fearless liberator. That could be something. I'm just not black or snow at this point to take this card. I'm not white. And raven wings is a fairly playable card that goes into any deck. All right. Well, now there's some. One, two, three snow cards wheeling, I think makes me interested in this sinkhole. I'm neither of these colors, but I need lands before, I guess I could also take, I just don't like this five, five. I guess before I take any of the snow cards, I need lands to play them. Ooh, but I do like run, run amok and fearless liberator is a thing. Okay, okay, so now we get Armin. So that's another source of white. Pairs with red. We don't have any equipment. Oh, no, we do have one. We have Raven Wings. Um, maybe Roots of Wisdom. I've never played this card. All right, now I guess I'll take the big booty. Warhorn Blast maybe makes it if there's more synergies with cards like Fearless Liberator, but I don't think I can pass this. Of course, this goes much better with black, but even if you have a few elves in your deck, it's so good. And I had people completely walk into the plus seven ability that they weren't even aware was online. It was a free game that I won. Right now we have only Sculptor. But you don't need that many to make it good. Like, look, you need two two bodies anyway. And two two bodies to do something in the in the latter game is very good. There aren't if we end up green, blue, blue has some shapeshifters, which will work as elves. You know, this is also an elf and it's a good card. Of course, I think I'm I'm taking Slumber Round. Yeah, like just these dual lands that are on color are so good. So it's a free card later in the game. By the way, you know, I'm not crazy about this card smashing success, <laughs> but cards like this make it like, a, 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 you know, a hair, a hair of a width better. Um, also awaken the trolls i guess like if you have awaken the trolls and you see this as one of the last cards you know if you're short on playables like you can play it it'll make you an extra four four on turn god knows what um this is best in a sideboard matchup against snow where you could really mess with an opponent if you take out one of their color sources i'm just going to take another run amok there's an ice high troll but i'm not even sure if i'm playing one of the snow lands and I'm happier with this. Wow. Now we have a mirror lake and we have a ravenous lindworm, but I'm not blue. Could be the lindworm. I mean, this is just there's also there's also an uncolor snow duel, but because I have sculptor and littering frost, I'm interested in my first ravenous worm. Well, now here is a very, a very tough pick. So we're definitely not taking a gun, but there is a herald to go with. Warmaster. This is an elf. It can find you an elf. We're not playing white, but we have a snowfield sinkhole. I mean, this is the type of situation where you can just completely train wreck your draft. I think I'm just going to take struggle. Like, plus one, plus one counter, fight spell. Our deck's aggressive. It wants to pressure with one of Mox and uh, fearless liberators and whatnot. I think, uh, you know, green is usually weak with removal, like if you get stuck playing against the fire. Well, now, man, now I wish. This is really good with Warmaster. But behold, the multiverse is just so much better. If I'm splashing anything, I'm splashing the 
glimpse of genius. But this is better than a glimpse of genius. Okay, so there's a 2 2 changeling. This is something I'm very interested in because, again, it triggers a war master. No reason to take a black duel. I'm just happy with this changeling right now. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, this this deck is this deck is coming together nicely. So now I can definitely trigger the the glimpse. I'm interested in any like blue duel lands. Shimmer Drift Veil will make sure I can play my uh, my card draw spells. Like here's the thing about these types of decks: they pack a lot of power, but they can run out of steam if you know when when you when you're hellbound when you empty out your hand because there's not too much card draw. Like there's the some sets have like a four drop green common that draws you a card, like the three two from the previous set. This, I guess, has a Sleuth's Backmate as well, but they get taken so highly, you're not very likely to get them late. This is a free, you know, it's a first pickable card. And from this pack, I guess, raise the Draugr. We can bring back like a Lindworm and a Changeling, or a Changeling and something else, maybe. What does this card actually say? I should read it probably, right? Return target creature card from your grave. Return two target creature cards. That yeah, so I mean, you could return a changeling and a worm because the changeling is also a worm. So it's quite strong. I think I'm good on two drops. I don't mind a boast creature. We already have two boast creatures with fearless liberator. And if we can, can, open, can get some boast synergies, like we can open the green rare that lets you boast twice. Um, you know, deal two is exponentially better than deal, deal one. Actually, this is... <laughs> Deal two mana to any two targets, which is even exponentially better than uh, just deal two to any single target, which is what this is, because this triggers twice. So now... I guess Skull Raid. That's kind of gross, the, this wheel. I'm definitely playing it now. Like this, this is kind of like my blue source for Glimpse because it, it, it doesn't work by itself, but we have Sculptor. Uh, sorry, I mean, we have Luring Frost. What am I taking here, by the way? I'm taking just, I guess, this four drop or a four power creature. The Veil is good. Like Recluse, it's not unplayable, but a Broken Wings is just so much better because you don't see it coming. It does the same thing. Wow, I'm not passing this card. This card is so strong. So we already have... This makes an elf, by the way, 4-4 four, four elf, which then becomes a 6-6 six, six elf with death touch. Uh, it, yeah, it's just, it works with the Glade Walkers. We're already trying to splash blue. Easy pickup. Yeah, I'm definitely taking the, I, I don't see what else I'm taking other than this duel. This is worth a lot to us in this situation. I'd love to take like an avalanche caller, but again, I'm not really, I'm not really snow at this point. I'm in the snow colors. But you don't necessarily need to be a snow deck if you're, you know, like um, a gruel, for example, right? Or we're, you know, we're, we're gruel splashing, light splashing blue. Probably not playing black. I mean, raise the dragger, it's not that great. It's called Raid School, much better in sealed, I think. It's between the Firewalker and Seeker. I like this because it's cheaper. It kind of does the same thing. They're both three twos. Yeah, like this is more like, you know, I'm more on turn three or on turn four if I don't hit my land and I have three mana, like I can still play this, boast, play run amok. I like it. Ooh, easy, easy, easy Fjord. This is exactly what we need. The more free sources of blue that we have, the better. And right now we have three with uh, Bark Channel Pathway, Mirror Lake, which can make another Lindworm. I don't think we need this 5-5. Five, five. I can safely say I'm going to cut it now. And I can just see we're going to get so many playables. I think Raven Wings makes, makes the deck. Oh, that's, ex that's like perfect. We're, we're set. Now we can, I mean, now we can even start picking up some snow payoff cards, like a Berkstrider. Speaking of, 
like with one two three four snow lands you know i'm four snow lands out of a 40 card deck means you're going to see one on average one in 10 times and you're going to play this on turn um on turn five maybe turn four by then you'll see more than a quarter of your deck so you're good and there's another liberator and we don't need white right we, we, do we have anything on the sideboard no i think i just take another one of these i mean run amux and feel it why are people like people are disrespecting this card it seems kind of strange to me um i don't have a broken wings yet i don't think right and i i main deck pretty much always one of these i'd love for there to be a need for this but much happier taking like this is so much better than the white version because this also gets a creature with flying this also gets you know creatures with flying that have equipment and enchantments on them which i think people don't think about as much like think about you know what percentage of the time is uh you know do you do you have like you know a, a flyer with equipment or or something you get flying too with raven wings you know you can knock out the raven wings their creature loses flying runs into your five five like there are so many scenarios where and again it's instant speed right so there's so many scenarios where your opponent just doesn't see this coming at all oh, that's that's a gift yeah i think we have enough snow lands to make this matter cavalry easy pickup Ooh, another glittering frost with sculptor maybe i don't think i want to play two of these well let's see like we did like we, we there's not too much snow payoff that we have right so we have i mean it's a big investment just to make a four four for an avalanche caller i'm not sure if that makes sense like mammoth growth is so much better because it does not give trample the troll does have trample though. oh actually we might run spoils in this deck because we want to play we want to make sure we can cast bears and uh yeah so let's see how many lands do we have we have 17 lands right now uh i might consider running 18 in this deck so let's see what what the cuts are i think we don't need raider if this was an elf we would want it but it's just it's a demon uh, definitely want raven wings sculptor vandal guardian war master two run amongst three fearless liberators pretty six i think we can cut uh we can cut one cavalry maybe cut the avalanche caller like it's it's good late also i guess one two three four no, it still makes at least you know one to two lands into four four so this is fine okay that's an easy cut seize the spoils not sure this is not cuttable i think we can cut mob and two more I like uh, Snakeskin Veil to protect the trigger from the bear's fight spell. Because this triggers, you can't stop this. This is not a May ability. Oh, but it's not a fight, it's a punch. Never mind. Yeah, so I guess it just protects like a 4 4 that you can make. So one easy cut i i just realized this snowfield sinkhole and uh we don't need armory like there's no reason to put enough color uh land in our deck one cut last card maybe veil i also cut the seize the spoils because we have card draw with like behold uh pack mate we have mana sinks with uh, three liberators like i just think we'll find better things to do with three mana and we're pretty good on uh on our color sources also with the fjord the pathway and the veil 
So really, it's just one cut. Probably snakes can veil. There's no like plus one plus one counters. The creatures are two ones. It's not like there. There are scenarios where this is a blowout. But other than that, like I guess I can cut another glittering frost. Maybe I don't. Maybe two's too many. Yeah, we can cut. Could probably cut glittering frost. Because with with glittering frost, snow covered mountain, fjord, and veil. That's four. Four uh, snow lands for color, and you don't need too many to make this good. Because if you can get a couple of activations, you're probably winning at that point. Let me just check the mana and then. We'll... Okay, so uh, final build looks like uh, six sources of red, uh, five blue, eight green, and actually this should say zero. There is no white. So we're a bit. I, I took out a mountain and added a. Um, out of the forest to make sure I can play the sculptor for mana ramp. So I think we should be okay with like eight sources of green with veil and pathway. So let's try this. And it feels like a pretty strong deck. I don't think it's an A, a tier deck. I think maybe it's like a B minus to, to B deck. But it, it feels better than average just because the colors, they're, they're some of the stronger color. Like deep is the greenest color in this format. Like the thing that makes this deck over the top is the mana ramp, even though I cut the second um, uh, three mana enchantment. I forgot the name, but uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. So this this is a good start. Again, I don't want to play Masked Vandal just to make a 1-1. One, one. I'd like to, like, I, I read this card to say, uh, this destroy target artifact or exile target artifact or uh, enchantment and uh, make a one three <laughs> make a one three change one right there are scenarios where you want to run it out but i prefer to hold this in my hand for as long for as long as possible so obviously no blocks like this doesn't let you foretell at any time you still have to do it during your main phase so most likely as Mova's you know opponent foretells attacks gets in for two probably passes the turn you know if he has a three drop probably probably just I don't know I guess you want to get in for two it depends on what your hand looks like but I haven't found this card to be that great because it's in it's in the color that doesn't really care about Fortel. Like black doesn't care about Fortel. Fortel is like the Vega the Watcher colors, which are uh, Zorius, right? So no reason to run a mock here. No reason to play Vandal. I'm just gonna attack. I mean, the thing about the 1-1 one, one is it does become a 3-3 three, three on turn 7. I don't know. I think with Runamook, maybe we can just run him over. This this might be greedy. But let's see. Maybe I'm right. Oh, that's a good target for Broken Wings. Hmm. I don't think this could be the bounce card um, I, I don't know what it is but there's no reason to play struggle right now I think I just attack with everything and then run amok whatever the block is plus struggle okay 
So let's run and mark my one one. I, I could have also like uh, snake skin veil to get the free kill on uh, dream devourer, but I'm, I'm not even sure if that's necessary because we're really pressuring our opponent now. He needs to activate this. In fact, he's quite, quite far from being able to do so, but something we should not forget. Wow, he wants to race. That's kind of aggressive. I guess let's play out our blue source so that we don't have to discard, and then we'll keep a, we'll keep a mountain for discard. So three, four, five. Two more turns until we can activate this. I guess we just get in. There's no reason to fight. I don't see a reason to fight. Yeah, it's going to be tricky to kill. Probably chooses to gain life, I imagine, with, with the more, more control deck. Yep. I would do the same thing. That's the correct, correct play. This also gives death touch, so they can attack through anything. So no removal from our opponent is good because every turn we're getting closer to activating. Again, I think we just we just chill and then we activate the Warham Warmaster ability next turn. And we, we protect it with uh, skins. We keep Snake Skin Veil right now to protect this. And then next turn, our opponent does not have good blocks because he's got a zero power creature and a two power creature. And this triggers even even if he dies, like if they kill it in response, the plus seven ability triggers, please attack. <laughs> I guess he should attack because he can't block with it anyway, but I would just block with the one three, so it's not that he's even getting any damage through. All right. So a good mana sink for, for the turn. All right, so we we could like we could behold. But yeah, no, our attacks are too good. Like really what our opponent needs to do is double block War Master. So let me make sure I, that, yeah, I have seven lands. Yeah, let's just get in there. Takes it. Uh, yeah, I think it's an easy, easy pump. Blood in the snow would be pr pretty bad. Oh wow, you want to go to one? Okay, that's actually very good for me. So I can I can still activate the ability because it just says it doesn't untap, but you could still pump your team and he's got a block, so I get free kills. I guess he'll throw longboat in front of the one one. Um, Do we, can we draw something to kill him? We can maybe draw a run amok to kill him. I think in this spot, like I can force him to trade the long, oh, he can't, he has to crew it. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a turn off because if if I can find another elf like this is gonna be so much stronger because this will also make me 
more elves. Uh, that's pretty good. I guess top, top. And then we can cast glimpse right. Oh no, we can't cast glimpse. We don't have any more blue. But what we do have is liberator, and then we keep up one for snakeskin veil and pass. So Shimmer Drift Veil with the second blue for the Mirror Lake. In case I guess they destroy this land. Um, I'm gonna glimpse. Speaking of the Mirror Lake, this is not a very mana efficient turn. Like, maybe I should have played a Lindworm in retrospect because I'm floating five mana. I can't cast this, right? Yeah, no, it's not blue mana. Why is it lit? It's lit because I have a changeling. Um, there's, not, there's no good fight target. I guess I could, like, kill this. There's just no need. Let's pass. Like we're still quite comfortably winning, winning this game in, in several uh, several ways. I just uh, want to make sure I have a better setup for for an attack. Mm -hmm. Now I will fight. I'm gonna get this guy off the board. That's their biggest blocker. So with Runamox, I wanna reduce how much toughness my opponent has on the board. Your attacks. I mean, next turn I would have pumped pumped these guys, and uh, if I get another land, I could still make an extra two one from the liberator. So just way too much pressure. Maybe I could have finished that game by playing more aggressively. I don't know, but feels like a pretty good finish in terms of sideboard. Um, I mean, I'm keeping the broken wings. Not any elves, right? I'm playing all of them. This finds an elf, but yeah, I just run it back. Maybe there's an argument for playing this outrider. Like it didn't seem like he had a lot of removal, so this would force some double blocks. But then what am I cutting? Maybe like a cavalry. Get even greedier, sure. Yeah, this is a perfectly, especially on the draw, it's a per perfectly fine hand. We're going to find blue. Uh, there's our outrider instead of a two drop. <laughs> Short. Okay, perfect. So that's going to be our source of blue, but we want to play the mountain this turn so we can play the liberator. And... Sure. 
Well, if you're going to do that, what are my options? I think I just attack and make a 2 1. This is not really card advantage, this is card choice. And um, if he doesn't keep blockers back, like, he's going to get punished. Like this turn, I can even just attack with a 2-1, keep this back. Nah, he's probably just going to block with the lull, but right. Ooh. Mm. I didn't draw a land, though, so maybe I start with Glimpse and try to find the land. Well, the Messed Vandal can get rid of that Longboat, right? So I don't really want to trade a Runamuck for it. I guess we just go Glimpse, find the land, and play preferably a Snow Land. You know, I'll take a mountain. And then we'll play the Sculptor and pass and set up for a better turn. We can also double block this if I want to with the Berserker and the Sculptor of Winter, make sure I get a creature. Yeah, he's probably gonna kill the Sculptor, so then I have a creature in the graveyard for Mast Vandal. So I'm kind of incentivized to double block as I get a free kill. And then if I get a land, I could even activate my Fearless Liberator. He can't crew this anyway. So I really hope to find a land off the top, because then that gets us to 5 mana for Grizzled Outrider at any point as well. But I would be happy just like going Vandal Suspending Behold to make sure that we can hit next turn. Probably not going to boast. Unless, again, if I find a land, yeah, then I'll boast and play Vandal. Looks like he's killing the Berserker instead of Sculptor, so. My only untapped snow land is in Mountain. All right, perfect. So uh, let's start with, and you can't crew this anyway, but. We're still going to get rid of it pre-combat. Like this is this is why this card's good. Like our opponent's got two cards, one in exile. We got four cards, one in exile, and we got a much better board state. Our opponent essentially traded off this you know legitimate card for a token. Or not a token, like a, a two drop. And then we had this. Oh, he assigned one damage to each. Never mind. Yeah, I just realized both of those died. Duh. Uh, again, it's, I'm still happy trading that. Because he's, I mean, he's boasting that turn. He's choking his mana. I didn't see, we don't get to see what, what he gets, right? Because you don't have to reveal it. Yeah, so we don't, we don't know what he got, but. Uh, so what's the plan? Six mana? Can I boast? I'll keep boasting. Oops. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I had to take a phone call. Uh, we ended up winning that match uh, quite easily. Um, opponent just didn't have any answers, and we kept making two ones and attacking. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> So 
So for those wondering what this thing is on the left, this is um, a overlay. Uh, yeah, we want to play first. So this is an overlay showing uh, what cards you've drawn, what cards are left in your deck, and your probability of drawing each of those cards. If you have multiples of cards, it also shows you that as well. Uh, so this is a keep. Hopefully we'll find our third land, even though we're on the play. We have Fearless Liberator. So obviously the tap land goes first. And I have, so I did not draw a land. This thing actually tells you <laughs> in advance, like even before it happens, if you watch, you'll see whether you're hitting land or not. So right now we're like 47% chance of hitting a land off the top. And of those one, two, three are tapped. So we did not hit a land, that's unfortunate. So in that case, I guess it's either wings or struggle. I'm more likely to get value with wings next turn. Whereas if I don't hit um, a, a source of green, then I can't even cast this. So it looks like our opponent is stuck on lands as well. Now, I think I'd rather attack and trade a run amok, even though he does have two mana up, but they're both green, so there's not much that he could have. This could be the pump spell. I mean, if it is, so be it. I think I'm just going to attack. Because I do want to take out his mana producer if he's stuck on lands. Like I am. Yeah, that's good. So that should slow him down by a bit. All right, all right. Ooh, nice. So we want green. I mean, uh, but for now it's the same play. I mean, I will just play another run amok if he wants to keep blocking. Okay. Green, and now I want to suspend struggle in case there's something uh, I want to fight. Although, with this having two power, uh, two toughness, I mean, even after the plus one plus one counter, that wouldn't be very good. So, he gets to use his oh, glittering frost. Okay, okay. Hmm. Now I really want to actually, so what I could do is I can uh, run amok and then struggle, but I wouldn't be able to make my 2-1. So but then he will have access to five mana next turn. I think I should struggle. I think that's better than, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. So let's go to combat. Attack. It's not like I'm wasting a run amok here because I'm still getting the damage. But this negates the combo that he's about to have. Uh, it also makes my Fearless Liberator bigger, which can matter because I do have Raven Wings. So this is now a four turn clock. like to find uh, an island or a source of blue at some point, but clearly it was more important for us to choose green at that, mo at that point for the fight spell. Because we can't cast the bears anyway because we need green and blue for that, so really we're missing out on just the avalanche color. Hey, what do you know? <laughs> My opponent's not going to like this, but he's also not going to like when I can make this go off and kill that Kill that enchanted forest. So that can now block a flyer. Ooh, that's that's really good. That's really good. Um, I think all I'm gonna do is equip. This is two to equip, right? All I'm going to do is, I guess I want to equip this. 
because this can attack and make a 2-1. And there's not much else I can do, so I just pass. <clears throat> and I do have two lands for Avalanche Caller, although, like, I don't, I'm not just going to trade them off for nothing because these are my only sources for the colors that I need. But now I have six lands, so I can go Bears and Avalanche Caller. I can also go Bears and make a 2-1 and trade with either one of these. I think I like that. He needs, yeah. Okay, so let's do this. So let's stack, see what he does. Sure. They both have reach, by the way. So then let's activate the ability by paying so the auto tapper is still leaving me one blue and one green. That's fine. And then we play bears. Oh, and that's right, we do make a one one. And if we get a land, we can pump so this attacks as a four power death touch. And these both attack as a, a four four and a three three death touch if I can get, actually no, not any land, I, I would need a forced, so. The odds of that happening, I have six forests in my deck and a bark channel pathway, so that's 28%. So I'm, they're all untapped, however, so that's good. So 28% chance to spike a forest off the top and then just pump my whole team. If not, then we can avalanche caller and start immediately attacking, um, assuming that, you know, we could even like, we can make a land, equip it with Raven Wings and attack, and that's going to make sure we don't lose our source of, uh, like, we can send a Fjord in because we, we have blue from this island, but we cannot send this Shimmer Drift Veil because it's our only source of green. Um, so this is the only one. Yeah, so that becomes a 4-4. Four, four. So what's the plan? So the plan is let's play, this is how much to use? This is seven, right? So I need one more land and I also need double green by the way. So let's just play Avalanche Caller. Let's, now, I want this guy to live because he can punch. Hmm. You know, to some extent, there's kind of no point in attacking here because I'm gonna get to punch the recluse anyway. I guess this plays around him maybe having like a creature and a fight spell. So maybe it is better to get this recluse off the board. We can offer like I can also do this instead of offering to trade a land, I can offer to trade like this two one. Ah, I should have, I'm an idiot. I should have equipped, equipped the elf warrior. But you know what? It's not too late to correct my mistake. I'm not gonna spend the mana on anything anyway, because I only have two left. And now we can attack with both of these. And that's a fair trade, I think, for getting two damage in. Like this, this could become a four four later, but I want to I want to consistently keep getting damage in, and I don't want to trade like a four four for this for this creature. <clears throat> and he can't he can't play anything anyway because this would punch whatever he plays most likely unless he has that five five or a, a Linwood or if he spikes a worm. But then I could but then if I get this triggers on my main, right? And yeah, I mean, they're both tokens, so I'll just decline, it doesn't matter. It's a good answer. So now he gets to eat the two one for free. I'm okay with that. Oh, was did he bounce the Raven Wings? Where's my Raven Wings? I think I just put my Raven Wings in the bottom or on the top of my library. If that's the case, I don't mind because I have, and its abilities can be activated, right? Well, this is unfortunate, but 
Uh, it's not the end of the world. I actually wouldn't mind a Raven Wings off the top here. Now, I, I, couldn't, I can't find Broken Wings to disenchant this uh, Bound in Gold. Like, this is a like fairly unexciting card to play, but when it goes off, like, you know, it could do quite a bit of work. Well, here's our buddy. So select target one creature planeswalker, but there's nothing we can do. So I guess it's just the uh, ravenous linworm and then make another one next turn. But I don't have double green. Are you kidding? Oh. So then is the play just to make another avalanche caller? Um, this is also double green. Yuck. So this is double green and this is double green. So I can't sack any of them. I can't sack this and then it would scribe it and it would kill two of my creatures. That doesn't seem very good. So unfortunately, yeah, it's just pass. Again, now we're 25, now we're 29% chance to draw a force. So it's like every third turn, like we should spike one out the top and it's been a few turns already. It's not like our opponent's doing much. And I'm not worried about the position that I'm in. Well, that's, yeah, that's unfortunate, but still it's like, he can start attacking now if he wants, but we just need like one more green land to get things really going. Mm. I can consider sacking this and scrying and then playing out the Liberator. I think I like that. So should I attack first? I guess I should attack first. So in case, I mean, he's probably gonna block, but in case he didn't wanna block, it would be like two free damage for me. So let's sag this. Ooh, nice. And Sculptor's a creature, so why not? And unfortunately we don't have don't have enough to play um, the Liberator, but it's okay because we're going to start going going off with Lindworms this turn, and then we're going to crack Mirror Lake for to make another one. Not too concerned. He's got one, two, three, four. I guess he's got quite 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 uh, quite a bit of snow mana, but he's not going to be able to attack with the Recluse, and he can't kill me in one turn. Oh wow, that he got me good. He got me good there. And that is GG's. All right. So our opponent is playing uh, Snow. So we go to sideboarding. It's only round one. Mm. I don't think I want to change anything. I would actually consider uh, bringing in the Destroy Land success card, given that we're up against a snow deck that is very sensitive to uh, problems with mana. But as it stands, did he have... So we didn't see much removal. We did see Run Ashore and Demon Bolt. So in that case, like snakeskin veil is pretty good. It's a cheap, cheap answer to that. I I don't think maybe like a hoggy mob. Did we see any X ones? So this is an X one. Not really. I don't think this is going to be like a deal breaker because it gets stopped by the troll anyway. There's nothing that deals with the troll that we have. All right, let's run it back. Yeah, I mean, that uh, hit the shore card really got us good. I think if it wasn't for that, we would be in, in much better shape. But opponent's deck is also good, and he's playing well. I think I still want to play first much better. Okay, perfect. So we go two drop, three drop, four drop. You can't ask much for much more. Although we may want to activate the ability of the Firewalker. We didn't see a sweeper from our opponent, so there's no reason to slow play. Wouldn't mind drawing Runamox to just keep keep running over. 
Like turn three, uh, like I mentioned, is if you don't spike a land and you want to just go to Ski, Firewalker, Boast, and then play the uh, uh, Run Amok, I mean, that's perfectly fine. So let's just attack, happy to trade. Not sure why it passed priority there. I can't pack mate at instant speed. That was a bit strange. We could also boast and play uh, the War Master. I like the idea of boasting. I mean, he really has an incentive to trade because it's like you get to draw a free card every turn. Yeah, I'm definitely playing that. And so the question now is, do I wanna foretell or do I wanna play Elvish War Master? I think I'm gonna play the War Master because I have four mana anyway to play Pack Mate next turn. So, and this way I get to attack sooner if he doesn't have anything to play here like if he just goes behold the universe three seasons yeah like this no oh, we can actually exile this now with the masked vandal do i want to do that this lets him return to snow permanent so yeah he's going to get like two trolls no way so this is a great target for masked vandal we're also going to get a one one Get rid of the smaller creature now that we have any graveyard effects, but for consistency. Now, I don't have another source of green, so there's no reason to like foretell. Oh, no, no, no. What am I doing? Yeah, I definitely played the untapped land because it's uh, colorless to foretell. I'm just going to do it now so I don't forget. I know I still have attacks, uh, but he stepped my opponent's tapped out, so it doesn't matter. And this way, I get to keep up Snakeskin Veil. So if he finds a uh, red and he tries to bolt my uh, war master it's not going to work sure and we're one land away from uh slumber mounding all the card draw in the world Okay, perfect. Ooh, and we get Avalanche Color, but we don't have any blue sources and we don't have any snow lights. That's okay. Maybe we can find something. So do I wanna play the Packmate first? I guess I should. There's no real downside in doing that. And look at that, I found my Snowland slash source of blue. It's better to play this tap land. And now we just attack. And I still have snakes in it, skin veil up. So even if he tries to bolt it, again, I have Veil, but it looks like he, yeah, he doesn't even have the mana for that. He's got, he could have had the bounce card, but this gives Hexproof, so that's actually fine. And I will play around the Sweeper, like I'm so far ahead, I don't need to play Avalanche Caller, because next turn I have access to, you know, kill his uh, only source of white and black <laughs> with my, with this card, and especially if he's still looking for answers. He's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, like, I mean, I guess he could spike Mountain and like uh, Battle of Frost, but even then, Masked Vandal would live. And Snakeskin Veil is an answer for that, so. Let's attack first. Uh, 
All right. I mean, in that case, then I think he's, I think I had lethal anyway, right? Yeah. That was a better answer than uh, slumber mound, of course. All right. Uh, so any changes? Two glimpses of behold. I mean, the deck is like very solid. Good match, very close. I like games like this where it's not like uh, just a beat down in one direction or another. I think uh, the power level of the decks is comparable. Maybe even like our opponent's deck is a little bit better. I haven't seen the rest of it, but wow, what a what a lucky draw for us. We get to go Frostpire into Island into Liberator. Or I could even play cavalry, but if I get an untapped land, I can start making two ones. This is just perfect. And we even have green for bears. And our opponent mulliganed. So it doesn't matter which one of these tap lands we play first. Okay, I'll make two ones all day long. Hmm, that's unfortunate because now I can't attack. So now I still want to play bears. So that means I play an untapped forest and pass. I also have snow mana for Strider. Nothing. Well, he does have his two snow lands to give him destructible, so I'm not attacking. Um, I don't have an untapped land, so I need to choose between. I mean, I can also make this a 5-5 five, five and attack, but I don't like investing too many resources into any, any one thing. I think I'm just going to go... I need double red, right? So this is going to be... Oh, I need double green, so this Shimmer Drift Veil is going to be green. Yeah, in that case, I guess I'm going to go Cavalry. I need double green for Lindworm and for Slumber Mound. So this is green. And no attacks. Oh, I mean, at the minimum, like if he, if he plays, an, I don't think he's going to play another creature unless he has a removal because he knows he's going to get punched. So, um, so yeah, target the opponent's creature. He's going to give indestructible. Troll gets tapped. So that means that I have an attack. Question is, do I want to make a 2-1? Yeah, I want to make a 2-1. It's fairly, fairly straightforward. It's better use of my mana, better use of my resources. And then I have double green. I have two sources of green also to double spell next turn. So that's fine. That's not an intimidating card. Ooh, so he does have two untapped lands. So the fight's not going to work. So I guess the plan is Berg Strider, attack with everything. Yeah, it seems pretty good to me. If he wants to 
block the four four. That's fine. I get two, like two more points of damage in, and I'll still have Fearless Liberator to make two ones next turn. Nah, it's fine. So he can take out. So I'm still trading a card for a card. This isn't a bad result by any means. It means I can still attack with this next turn and threat threaten to make another two one. And, and we have a lane worm, but we're one short. So do we want to put a counter on something? I guess we can put a counter on Bergstrider pre-combat. So even if he chumps it, then he's still dead. Yeah, I think the play is Glade Walker, yeah. I, I was actually going to put it on the Berserker in case he has Demon Bolt. To get more damage across, but anyway, fairly easy sailing, easy breezy. So now we're off to the finals. Again, I apologize about the first video. I'll try to record another bonus video after this. Since the first video got screwed up, but literally like it was maybe two more turns of just very one-sided stuff. Um, just a quick look at the deck. Maybe we want to change something based on what we learned. I don't think so. I mean, really, it's just about this Axe Guard Cavalry, making maybe making room for Huggy Mob. Again, we, we're doing 17 lands, which is fine. I don't think we need to change anything. It feels kind of, kind of bad not playing one Axe Guard because... But our deck is still not like overtly aggro but there's 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 also control element to it with some really strong late game stuff like Burke Strider and, and Linworm. But I guess yeah like we're still trying to attack early. I don't know. Perfect. All my mana. I mean like this is just <laughs> like it doesn't with an opening hand like this, it's like immediately my gut feeling is like our probability of losing is quite low. I think just with this opening hand, we're like, I don't know, maybe 70% to win something like that, 70, 75 maybe. You know, I don't think I'm going to attack here. I want to make most use of my mana. I'm going to put Glittering Frost on a, on a forest. And uh, I don't need to, I, I prefer to do my thing like when he's tapped out. Um, also, this means if I get another land next turn, I can run a mock and activate to make a 2-1, which is much better. Yeah, like this is perfect. He, if he wants to attack by all, by all means. So I didn't, unfortunately, I did not get an untapped land. Um, so we have, what do we want? I guess we want another source of blue. Sure. So let's make this blue. And yeah, definitely attacking. Let's see if he blocks or not. Yeah, so. In that case, let's go. We need green for the War Master. So let's go run amok on the Liberator. And then let's play our War Master. Hmm, that's. <laughs> Death Touch First Strike is, uh, yeah, that's something that's going to need to be dealt with. Because that combination, like, this is basically indestructible. You cannot deal damage to it. The only other way to kill it is with another First Strike creature. Um, so I would need to find my Broken Wings. And this is why I was saying, like, you have a high percentage of situations where an opponent, like, over-invests resources into a single creature like this. 
So now I need to wait until I can pump my War Master. Question is, do I play like two creatures? I think I want to play the Cavalry in case they find something big that I can give haste to, and I want wings. And I'll keep the Liberator in my hand, but there's not much I can do right now. Death Touch and First Strike. There was that card I got banned called Stone Throwing Devils. It's a card from Arabian Nights. And uh, the effect is it uh, gives uh, First Strike. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a one black for one one black creature with, uh, with us. I think it's First Strike, yeah. That's the card I'm thinking of. So again, I still don't have attacks. Question is, do I play Liberator and like put Raven Wings on something? I guess. I mean, I don't have six for Lindworm. One, two, three, four, five. I need another land for that. So let's just go. I don't know. What are we going to equip? One of the Liberators? Sure. I mean, this this is not great because the opponent can start getting good attacks with uh, with the Zombie Berserker. So we're taking four a turn right now. This is just, you can't get through this. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, like, it's like one of those like super weak, but very effective, uh, you know, things you can do. Like, I think some, some of the better players like can put together combos like this, but the cost of this is, is that it goes into like a very bad color combination, which is that two spell a turn black green, like it's just terrible. Um, so I can get a Lindworm, but again, I can't attack with it. I can't attack with anything because I'm just losing a creature a turn. I mean, I could deal damage, like I could deal four, seven, eight, nine, but I just lose a creature. I deal nine, lose a creature like he's got three cards in hand. It's not very likely to win me the game. I need to find my, I need to find removal or a Bergstrider. That's also fine. Yeah, so that's getting sacked immediately. I always I always screw this up. This is so complicated. Like, what do you do to sack? Do you take action or do you decline? It's not very intuitive. It's just they sacrifice this creature and then take action, sacrifice it, decline, you don't. So I do I decline to sacrifice or do I take action and sacrifice? Take action and sacrifice, yeah. All right, well, this is actually good because now, now I can get, get rid of the death touch. Well, this is an interesting question because I, I have a choice, right? So I can maybe try to race, but I'm taking five a turn. And this is still death, this is still first strike, so I can only attack with two things. So I think the plan is to kill the Raven Wings. This will reduce the damage I take. Unless this gets countered, of course. Also get a 1-1, one, one, which is good. So the Raven Wings, so this loses flying and now I can get some Decent blocks on this. Lindworm goes bye-bye. But at least I'm not facing like a super fast clock. I'll find another way of dealing with the Raptor when I spike my Broken Wings, which is like 4% a turn. I can also kill it with Bears because that's a punch. I'm willing to trade a Struggle because you're still trading two for two. No, I'll still double block with Liberator and like, I guess, Cavalry. I don't want to keep keep taking damage. Like, <laughs> death, like death Touch First Strike still beats just like a bigger Death Touch because the First Strike Death Touch is dealt first. Yeah, this is like the strongest combo of, you know, any two abilities that uh, will just shut anything down. So Mirror Lake is good because now I can kill that rune. 
I can clone this into a room. So this turn, all I can do is equip. I mean, it, does it matter what I'm equipping? I guess I'll equip the weakest, the weakest card and pass. So he's gonna lose um, the death touch, which means that I can like, at some point pump team and get in. God, that's not what I wanna see. Actually, it's not too bad. That's not too bad. He can equip it and then it's much harder to block. Ooh, this changes things. So now he wants to race. He's gonna re-equip the equipment. I still can, I can still get good attacks with these three and that can deal quite a bit of damage actually. So, ah, uh, he's gonna re-equip, does he have enough? Yeah, he's gonna re-equip the Draugr's Helm. Yeah. Well now, Burke Strider is a great top deck. So, Nice. So this chokes his mana a bit because if he gets like an expensive card, I mean, of course he can play it and gum up the board, but he can't do that and re-equip. So he can only re-equip, but then he's got to keep his creatures back. Perfect time to spike um, Broken Wings. Still 4%, I think it's like closer to 5% now. Or Bears or Struggle, anything, anything you got. Or a land. So he's at 11. So it doesn't make sense to attack now. I can get in one, two, three, four, five. Ah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it actually does make sense to attack. I think I need to get aggressive. Oh, and I can pump two. Oh, yeah. I think this might just be game, right? Oh, no, I have six. I have six mana. I'm one, one away. Does that mean I wait a turn? So let's see, let's so he eats Burke Strider. He takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I make another two, two. No, I attack with everything. Yeah, that, that attack was clutch because his life is so low that he can't kill me on the swing back unless he finds something that can deal two more damage. He needs to keep creatures back to block anyway. And uh, I guess I will play this. I could have also crack the mirror leg there, but I think this was better. Because this means that even if he plays a creature, I'm st I still have lethal on the board. Does he have a pump spell? That would be bad. Oh, okay, he top decked it. All right, all right, so good beats, good beats. So losing the first round in the finals. Um, should we have played that differently? I guess we could have left back like an Blocker to block, maybe. I don't know. That card's not even like that often played. So would uh, a recluse stop the flyers? Yeah, I guess the recluse needs to come in. And what am I taking out? Like maybe cavalry? I'm just hating on calories. But it's only because like I have better two drops, I think. Shapeshifter is a, you know, better two drop for Glimpse. And also for the uh, War Master, because it makes, uh, it gets you a 1-1. One, one. I mean, I've been really lucky with my mana. I don't have blue, but I have plenty of stuff to do. I think this is a keep. I need to, it would be really nice to find blue though, but I think I'll be fine. Famous last words. What are my odds to draw? So let's see. Fjord, Shimmer Drift Tail, 6, 9, 15%. That's not too exciting. But at least I can foretell this and then play Recluse on turn 3. Absolutely no reason to play Vandal. Ooh, 
Well, now there's a reason to play Vandal because that's going to become a 4-4. But because my opponent's got so much equipment, I think I'm just going to run out Recluse and I'm not going to, I'm not going to rush anything. Let's just get a big threat on the board. This also worked with bears in that you get two targets that can deal four damage if your opponent has removal for one of them. So do we want to trade? I mean, this already, so he doesn't have, no, he does have black. So he can play the rune. Um, I don't think I want to trade because this punches. Question is, do I want to try to be like greedy man efficient and play behold first? Play like an, another two drop and then, yeah. What if I find like, so what do we get? Glittering Frost, do I want that? Hmm, sure. Okay, so that's good. I didn't find like another change lane. There's no need to attack. We have like a more more threatening, more dominant board position right now. <laughs> yeah, I think we just need to start doing the thing. So start with that. Let's play a glimpse. See what we find. Maybe we can find a changeling to get more value out of uh, bears. Now we just get a, uh, a wolf, which I'm happy with. Now we untap this forest. Play bears. Make a 2-2 two, two and pass. This uh, also turns on, uh, this is turned on by the, by the shapeshifter, so. So we put a Fearless Liberator and a Mountain on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, I'll still get the punch trigger. There's, there's no reason. I'm, I'm going to lose the life. So um, let's take action. Oh, God, it, this got me again. <laughs> um, it's OK. It's not, not that big of a deal, actually. Uh, so what do I want to do here? Let's play Packmate. I think I want to play Mirror Lake first. All right, so now we'll get to punch. So let's punch this. I think I'm gonna crack the mirror like before attacks in case he's got the deal five. So this way I get a four four and I get to draw a card by cashing in a land. I could have also sacked and, and made a four four, but I'd rather have a four four that draws a card instead of destroys an opponent's land. Um, so now, do I want to play wings or do I want to attack? I think I'm just gonna attack because I have plenty of mana next turn. So at least now I have a creature in the yard for Vandal. So I guess he's gonna equip it with the rune to try to get a 2-2 once it dies. Yep.
yeah, yeah, I'm just going to do it while he's live. Uh, ah, interesting. Or do I play an avalanche corner and start sending in lands? No, I, th I still think the better play is first to exile. First to exile this rune. Oh, it doesn't bump the stats. So actually, there's, he's not going to get the 2-2. Two -two, so there's, there's no reason to waste it. So in that case, in that case, yeah, let's go avalanche caller. Maybe, maybe it's just make a 4-4. Four -four. So is the plan attack with everything, lose my 4-4, four -four, and then destroy a land, make a 4-4? Four -four? The, the death ability triggers if the power is three or greater, but this only gives death touch. It doesn't increase stats or anything like that. Sack my slumber mount. Uh, and, and pass. So now I can actually mask the Vandal to get rid of Bound and Gold. And I can get some attacks in with the Avalanche Caller. So mask Vandal, kill the 4-4, four, four, uh, free up my 4-4. Four, four. Then play Avalanche Caller with these two lands. Uh, pay two. It wasn't lethal, but it's quite close. And I could have still cast a uh, glimpse. Did we see any X ones? Not really. Not, not much sideboarding. I wish I had like more flying hate as it is. I only have the recluse and broken wings. By the way, our, I don't think our opponent has still seen uh, broken wings yet. So that's a nice uh, surprise reserve that we have for when we need it. No red. Eighteen percent chance of drawing uh, a red, and eighty-two percent chance of doing nothing for the first God knows how many turns. I think we need to send this back. Yeah, this is much much better, and I'm gonna ship back. I guess glimpse. I can't cast it right. So Nice. I think by now it's clear what the plan is. Just attack and boast, attack and boast. Keep getting extra two ones without having to spend any cards in my hand. Uh, okay, well now I can't do that. But what I can do... I could play Raven Wings. Ah, oh, this is two to equip. So then I can't attack and make a creature next turn. So in that case, I think I just want to play like Warmaster in case I draw an elf next turn. And I'm going to keep up Snakeskin Veil and just pass. Okay. Another land is actually good. So now I can play my other Liberator and Ravenwing's most efficient mana play. And next turn I can equip, attack, 
force a trade and make a free two on no tags. Hold on, getting aggressive. That's fine. It probably means he has a like a fatty to play. What is he playing? Oh, helm. So it's a four four. Mm. Why is he saying nice? I'm worried when opponent says nice. Do I want to block here? I don't think it's the end of the world if I go to 14. I mean, our opponent's at 20, but I can get blown out here. And I'm not like in a terrible spot. Same plan all day long. So I'm not gonna trade three of my creatures, but I'm, I don't mind taking four. Okay, opponent has his own or even wings, so that, so that means that they can trade, but I could still make a 2-1. Ooh, that's a good draw. That is a good draw. Now I think the plan is to attack with everything. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm, one, I'm one short of using this, but it, it would only pump itself because there's no other elves. I'm just attacking with everything. He could have the one mana untap a creature, give it flying and plus one plus three, but I mean, that's the case, so be it. Oh God, I tapped the wrong land. I tapped the wrong land. Why did, why did I do that? I was supposed to leave green up for a veil, but that wasn't even the out attacker. That was just me. I don't think this is going to punt the game. Um, but certainly not. Not Okay, this is a problem because now this is a menace with a two-turn clock. So he's playing 2-1. So do I have lethal on board? Oh, that's a that's good because I can now I can make a land, give it snake, uh, pump it with snakeskin veil, and then fight. So let's make sure we don't die. I don't know what his last card is, but I have to do this. So green, red, avalanche crawler. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, I don't have enough mana for that. Ugh. I mean, I'm losing next turn anyway. Like, I only have one line of play. Um, just put this on avalanche crawler one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i have exaxes if he's got nothing else then this is game
I don't know what opponent's doing. All right. <laughs> well, we got there by uh, the, the width of a, of a human hair. But I'll take it. It's another 3 0. Oh, hope you guys enjoy that. It was a little bit stressful. A uh, couple of punts in there, nothing too serious. But a 3 0 is a 3 0, and I'll, I'll take it any day. All right, I think I promised another draft, so let's just jump right in. I don't know if anybody else has this, but sometimes Arena just craps out. <laughs> I haven't tried the, the mobile version of Arena yet, but I've had issues where it just randomly crashes or where you're unable to see or join any events. Um, I think on the whole, like, did an amazing thing, like given how much traffic goes on on this platform, given how many people are connected, how many different things need to be going uh, at any given time. It seems like from an IT perspective, their architecture is qu quite good. Like imagine how big of a step up this is over um, MTGO. Like I love MTGO, that's what I started playing on. And to some extent I even like it better, but it's just so slow. Like arena is so much faster, like for you and for your opponent. The economy on Arena, I don't think it's bad if you're playing best of three. Like if you're good at uh, MTGO and you can 3-0, you know, significant percentage of your drafts to have like, you know, close to break even EV when playing or maybe even a little bit positive, you know, then you're basically you know, playing for free, but, you know, maybe building up some sort of library of cards. Here, if you're playing smart, then your gems can go a long way and even if you want to rank up and even if you're losing, I think everybody loses in gems in uh, best of one. It's just designed that way. Like, I mean, if Ben Stark is losing gems in best of one, then <laughs> the whole world is. So, but you can play best of three, um, you know, have like a better gem win rate if you can 3-0 enough times. And that'll subsidize your best of one play if you want to rank up and whatnot. All right, so uh, this is a strong card, but I'm not that crazy about Blue Black. I kind of like Flynn though. This works with the Black Green um, Saga, which gives your creatures death touch on the third trigger. There's a chance we can wheel a Maja from here. Like this, this card is good. Like it's not insane. Um, there were cards like it printed, like Mnemonic Betrayal has a similar effect. But I'm just going to take a really solid two drop. This thing blocks a lot of the creatures in this format. Yeah, yeah, you should show. Um, I'm being told I need to take the kid. So uh, easy second pick, uh, Mirror Lake over a snow covered forest. There is a. Golgari duel, but I'm gonna take the mirror lake. I love mirror lake. We're already green green with Finn, so it's kind of on color in that regard. And by the way, I think this is also the best uh, function or utility land to take because you often want to splash your card draw, which is what some of these decks are are really lacking. So you want to splash a glimpse in green decks because you have change lanes. You want to. Uh, splash behold the multiverse so now it's between Berkstrider and Narfi we don't have <laughs> my kid making, making noise with the balloon in the background <clears throat> I think Berkstrider like it's just such a good card if you're aggressive, it, like we can make a, and, and you can you can copy it with Mirror Lake. And look at that, we got an Arfie anyway. But there's also Shimmer Drift Veil. Now I'm gonna take the Veil. I think somebody else can go into like blue black. I wanna make sure I can play my spells. And Shimmer Drift Veil is, is so strong because it's still early enough. We may end up splashing green. We may not be base green. Like I know we just passed two Narfies, but the upside we get in return is you know, having cards, we're sure we're going to play. Like, there's not a deck where you're not playing Shimmer Drift Veil very rarely, unless you literally have zero snow payoffs and we already have one. 
And now I think it's just a snow covered forest. So this is pick five. Um, forest is, again, again, green is the best snow color. So there's a lindworm now. And I do see the island, but lindworm is better because we have mirror lake. And at this point, like we're fairly committed to green with three green picks, three and a half if you count mirror lake. Forest, fin, and ravenous worm. So right now, I would say this is like, we're off to a, a better than average start to the draft, even though we don't have like a bomb, bomb rare. We have like, you know, probably this is top quarter um, in terms of like the top uh, uncommons in the set. It's just, it's just, it works out to be really good. Like it, it attacks well into like this, look, there's two one twos in this pack that this can attack into. Um, so now I don't mind taking the Sentinel, but I'm gonna take the, the sinkhole in case we get more snow payoffs. Pretty easy Horizon Seeker. There's that snakeskin veil that won us the game last, last round. I like having one in my deck. Again, I'm not crazy about it. I'm not gonna judge a card higher than just because I won. I mean, it is what it is. So we could actually end up elves and I'm gonna hedge on black a little bit. There's two decent black cards in here and an elf deck can be very strong in draft because it's often underdrafted. Not interested in any of these white cards. I don't want the green card. It's not late enough to where I wanna, where I wanna take this against the, the situations I talked about. Raise the Draugr works well with green because there's changelings. And if you have a changeling and something else in your graveyard, you can bring it back. So easy broken wings. I see the late sword. White decks don't really want a seven, like an expensive seven one drop, seven drop like that. So I don't think it's necessary. And here I'm gonna take Pilfering Hawk over the snow covered plains. Plains is the weakest of the snow covered lands. We don't have any white cards that we wanna play. We do have a sinkhole, but um, again, I'm just gonna take an elf and hedge on, hedge that maybe elves is open. And who knows, we could end up uh, playing one ashore. It got us really good. We still won, but it got us really good uh, in the second game of the last draft, draft in the first match. I think it's just Faceless Heaven, Haven. Like if this card is good enough to run in mono green standard, <laughs> it should tell you something. Uh, mono red standard, sorry. Uh, easy spirit. There is another lindworm, but I want to. I want a first one of these. This makes sure I hit my my lands on curve for Berg Strider. And it's just a good card. Like it draws your card. We do want to focus on increasing uh, the number of snow permanents. So there's the Glade Walker that that I really like. I found this card overperforms. And two, it overperforms because you're always looking for two drops. It's a changeling, so it survive, survives against like your opponent's mass destruction. Well, now there's the Herald. So this is the pivot point in the draft where we can like quite easily pivot into elves if we want to. But when there's a ravenous lindworm and a troll, I don't think it makes sense. So the question is, do we want to be greedy or do we want to be responsible and just take the troll? given that we have a few snow lands already. Given that I have Mirror Lake and Lindworm already, I'd rather have a solid three drop. This can stop a lot of aggressive decks with the indestructible ability. So fairly straightforward. Um, I'm happy with Augury Raven. Had I taken the elf card, I would have taken a mentor, but we're still getting good playables for our core two colors. So I don't regret at all not moving into Elves. This is pretty terrible. Um, one one thing to note is the U, the rootless U. It can find creatures with power or, or toughness six or more. So, if you're playing rootless U paired with green, this is something that you can find. Um, that's really the only scenario where I would play it. You can also take a, a Raider's Crave. I'm just going to take the colorless card. I mean, I 
I don't see a reason to, to play this. Um, so this is an interesting spot. Um, this is a, this is really good for us, especially given that we have Lindworm, um, Bergstrider, but we don't have any black, and it doesn't look like we're going to be black. Whereas Augur Raven is just solid. We do have um, a sinkhole and the Shimmer Drift Veil, so for that I think I'm going to take it because it, maybe we'll find some more free sources of splashing. So I have one Lindworm. Um, and I'm much more comfortable going into battle if I have at least one Masked Vandal. And actually will take this over a Snow-Covered Forest, even though I want those as well. Uh, it just shows you that I like this card quite a bit. Now, even though I don't have any red cards, I'm looking at the Snow-Covered Mountain. There's also a Rune of Flight, which I found, well, it could work with Flynn. <laughs> uh, I think if it wasn't for Flynn, I wouldn't take it, but that's a win con on its own. I think now I take the other one. Where... And no, I don't think this is greedy. We're not going to run this run ashore. Uh, I will take a Raven Wings for our top end fatty. So I mean, I think our top end is like more than good. We can cut the Faithful. We're not going to run this. We're not going to run the Dusk Wheelers. I'll take this now. We still wield the relevant elf card. Oh, but there's a snakeskin veil. I think I'm more interested in the snakeskin veil. It can protect Flynn or Finn, sorry. Yeah, like this is where I, this is the type of pick where you should take smashing success over the random white card because there are scenarios where it's more useful for you. Oh man, what an opening pack. So we opened Dragonskin, Dragonkin Berserker. I gotta just play this, right? Is that being too greedy? Let's see, what is my fixing? I don't have a single Glittering Frost. Shimmer Drift Veil is the only card that can, I think it's just too good, right? Yeah, let's just take the Glittering Frost. As much as I want to take that and have fun, let's try to actually win drafts, right? So the card, there's two cards that catch my eye, which is Behold the Multiverse and also Bloodline Pretender. Let's just get a quick count. So we have like three Warriors and two Shapeshifters. There's like a random Berserker maybe somewhere in there. I just think it's just Multiverse. Easy, easy pick. Maybe we can wield the pick from this pack and I'll actually, I'll consider playing a gold vein pick in this deck. So now we have this other um, black paired green utility, utility land. I'm gonna take this, hoping to find some additional free sources of black. So yeah, easy, easy pack mate. Not, not too many things you can take over pack mate. Like, and if you're wondering, like, is Packmate close to Morite? It's it's not even close in favor of Packmate, even though um, it's you know Packmate is exactly the colors that I'm playing. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna keep giving me Mirror Lakes and uh, Lindworms, I'll keep taking them. So now, probably like the card that we want more than anything else is the uh, Snow Shaper, because with that I can. I can accelerate and uh, play a lot of my top end. This is a like ridiculously difficult pick between a second Vandal or a snow covered island. V Vandals get a little bit worse in multiples without additional synergies. I think I'm just gonna take the island. We don't have one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this will trigger one and four. So this is like draw a quarter of a card. Yeah, why not? So we already have one copy of Raven Wings. Do we see like any need to play a card like this? I can bounce my own big things back to my hand, maybe. 
I'm not playing a second Raven Wings. I'm not even sure. I can't, I do want to play the first copy if I can make it fit, but I'm not sure. I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lands. So I already need to make cuts. So I'm just going to take this random dual land in case I want to splash smashing success against um, a snow deck to try to prove a point. <laughs> And actually, Spirit can even thatch it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, sometimes I like doing things for the memes. Looks like we're not going to run the black stuff, even though we did get a Shimmer Drift Veil. It's just not worth it. It's not worth screwing up our mana base to try to squeeze in like two extra utility land cards. Well, now there is a Shimmer. Uh, now there's a. Gold pick, gold pick veil, which I will take over like the third lindworm. Now I'm a bit more tempted to play those lands because that's another way of paying for them. Master Scalp is the card I want to play against least. And we get a Disdainful Stroke, which I will snap pick over Bind the Monster. I don't like Bind the Monster and I'm not crazy about it in a matchup like this. Take the Great Hall. We are playing best of three, so there's a world in where I side in and all against some very powerful spells that I can't otherwise deal with. So I need to make three cuts. So it's an easy dragger, dusk wielder, and undersea invader. And then in terms of land, I'm two color. I'm not running the black stuff, right? So we don't need to run the meadow. We don't need to run this. And we don't need to run port. This gives us more untapped lands. I think the auto suggester is correct. So it's six. We actually don't need the sinkhole either. And, and we don't have enough to play the haven. But everything else is fine. Like with even with three snowlands, like it's four with glittering frost, I think we're good. Perfect mana. <clears throat> I don't remember putting this in a deck actually. <laughs> I don't I don't mind having it, it's not terrible, but um, not sure. I think maybe there's a better card than this for us. Ooh, that's scary on turn one. So I guess we want to play Mirror Lake. I think, uh, Not sure. I guess we're going to foretell the part of the realm. There's no reason to play it now. I may need to save it for Ascendant Spirit if it gets out of hand. Like, our opponent can already make it a 4 4. Oh, no, sorry. It's It, it goes in order. <laughs> so I'm going to end up taking some damage from this, but I might, st it's, st it's still probably better for me to wait until my opponent invests more resources and then bounce it rather than just randomly bouncing sculpt sculptor now um playing tapped land um 
don't have a three drop. I guess let's go blue. Nothing else to foretell. Yeah, it's a slow start for us. Yeah, that's kind of what I was hoping for. Let's see if he does anything else, like puts a rune on it or something. So he can replay it, make it a 2-3 again next turn. And then we can start locking it down. All right, all right. Let's play our bear. So it's a 2-4. And do we not have any more snow, snow lands in our deck? We drew all, our, all three of our snow lands. That's, that's unfortunate. Yeah, the third, the island's in our hand. Oh, well. Mm. We do have Broken Wings as an answer for this. Why is he attacking? His last card is a pump spell. Oh, sure. Still trading a card for a card. So we definitely start attacking here. So we got with the Mirror Lake, we're playing a Lindworm every turn for the next two turns. So we really don't want him to have removal. He doesn't. And now it's just a race. But being the lifelink, I should be okay. Hopefully he whiffs on that. He did. Ooh, I also like that. So let's attack first. Now he needs he needs four for the last transformation and he doesn't have that, right? So let's just go Two for one ourselves, but we get the biggest threat off the board. And then we're just gas from here on out. Mm, I don't think I would have done that on his turn. Because then he can double block with this Frost Augur and Grieving Hall. I guess he doesn't want to lose this if he feels like it's a better card. Okay, okay. So now, like removing, using this to remove um, a pick, it's not really a good move. It's still like, this has a counter on it. So... Uh, 
I don't know why I did that before combat. I guess to intimidate our opponent. <laughs> I also like that. I like that chump. I'll take it. Our opponent didn't need to chump. He could have gone to four. But with a six drop and a seven drop, I guess he wants to buy as much time as possible. Although I, even if he has Battle of Frost and Fire, that's the only sweeper in his colors. That's not going to do much. Yeah. Not much of a sideboard plan. Although Run Ashore, is Run Ashore good? He's using equipment. Run Ashore could be good against resetting Ascendant Spirit as well. So I think I'm going to run that. It's another answer. We'll find something to cut for that. I don't think I want a null for anything. It's enchantment and artifacts. Yeah, not, not anything. No reason to bring in an null. And I don't really need a 5-6. So what's the cut? I guess the Crave, probably the worst card in our deck. It's not terrible because it ramps, but I'd rather have a creature that can attack and block against our opponent. Yeah, this is perfect. With Behold, we'll find green. We may even just uh, Behold Raven. It's not like we have nothing to do with our mana. Oh, and there you go. So let's play Merrily. Yeah, now I'm definitely playing uh, Augury Raven first. Like, you, there's a reason to play Behold um, if, if you need to hit your land drops and if you have absolutely nothing to do. But in this situation, I'd rather get an attack on the board sooner. And next turn, I can even protect it with uh, Snakeskin Veil. Kind of gives away that I have a spell, but it's okay. The only way to play around that is to hold full control and it takes so many clicks. So I'd rather just, sometimes you give information away, but in this case, it doesn't matter. All right, so next turn I can, this doesn't have reach, right? No, it doesn't. Ooh, that's second green for our worm. That's perfect. So the two options, I can behold end of my opponent's turn, or I can go Guardian as a blocker for Sculptor. I kind of want to keep up Snakeskin Veil. So for that reason, maybe we can just... Hmm. If I play the Gladewalker, I, I also have like a good double block on Craven Hulk. Because, I mean, I'm winning the long game, right? With Lindworms and uh, a Narrow Lake, like, there's really, I don't see how I lose. And then, so the question is, like, do I keep up Snakeskin Veil to make sure I can get a better double block in case he's got, like, a uh, Demon Bolt, or do I, do I behold? Given that I have an island in my hand, I might regret doing this, but I'd rather make sure I get like a good double block and that my creatures can survive. And it's so unlikely that my opponent can match what I'm doing unless he's got some ridiculous bomb rare. I mean, even Svela, I can argue is probably too slow here. I mean, I can also kill the Sculptor, but I'd rather get the 4-4 off the board, even if I have to trade trade my Raven, because Raven's not how I win. Okay, so this makes it an 8-8, eight, eight, in which case the Veil does nothing. Yeah, it's a, it's a good two for one, but I like how he played Svela before combat as well to try to 
throw you off. I don't think like my blocks would have been different particularly. So let's, we got to survive one more turn. And unfortunately the only thing we can do is behold. So yeah, we're taking a beating here, but then if we were just playing Lindworms back to back and we can stabilize. Should probably also attack with Sela. That's actually better for us if he's not attacking with Sela. Yeah, I like I like both of these. So he needs two more to start using the ability, but we can also bounce that token with Renishore if we feel like it could become a problem. So of course, if he's got removal here, we're pretty, like if he's got squash, then we're pretty much dead. Otherwise, it's like well, that's also that could also be a target for Renishore. I think I attack and keep up running short. I'm going to play around the counter spell and do it now. So this chokes his mana because he can either Svela or cast these. So I think it was a good, like I'm trading, you know, six mana for temporary removal of 10 mana. And I have Snakeskin Veil to protect against bounce or removal in case he wants to go that route. Hmm. So I can Burke Strider and then I can keep up Depart the Realm. And then I can clone Burke Strider. I like that. Yeah, because this guy can't block alone, so he needs to have a better blocker. See what it is, whatever it is, hopefully I can bounce it. Like I would also like if he, if he finds removal for Lindworm, I would actually bounce it to protect it. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even need to bounce that. I can just tap it and force a chump block. Let me just do the math real quick. Yeah, so we just pass, pass. I think I just have lethal, right? So, yeah, so I, I depart the realm, any one of these, I can clone Burke Strider and then Yeah, you get the tap effect anyway. So let's just bounce, depart the realm. I guess it doesn't matter the three, two. He does have one mana untapped, but I can't imagine like, you know, I'm not gonna put him on uh, on an, yeah, there's no counter spell that can counter this for one and all doesn't do it. So now we just need to make sure we don't screw this up. Let's crack this to main, yeah, to main. Uh, 
crank this Berkstrider Smith auto pay resolve. Okay. <clears throat> so there wasn't even a need to play any more Lindworms. This fellow's cool, but again, like eight man is very intensive. And even though he's getting free value, you saw that because we bounced creatures like he, he he was choked on mana he can get full value so even though Svela would have would have won in the long game if we couldn't keep that going really like he just ended up paying more mana for like a randomized effect you know he ended up paying eight mana for a boreal rider like it, in the short term that's that can really put you behind So I won the coin flip and chose to play first. That's a decent enough keep. We got two, uh, two of our three snowlands. We have, uh, hopefully we can find a two drop. Even a, even a pilfering hawk would be great. Nope. But I also don't mind drawing the best card in our deck. One of the best cards in our deck, arguably. Of note, Ice High Troll can now keep this activation up, even though I don't anticipate uh, passing with the, you know, keeping up mana too much. Uh, yeah. And then this is going to find our Shimmer Drift Veil, which is the last snow, snow land in our deck. And that's going to ramp us to Ravenous Lindworm. So I really hope I don't spike Shimmer Drift Veil off the top of my head. All right, good. I could kind of take a free attack here. I don't think he's going to block. Yep. Perfect. Oh, so it's to your hand. It's not to your board. Yeah, never mind. Sorry, I lied when I said it ramps us. It does not. Twenty nine percent odds of an untapped land. Did I get that right? No, I got that wrong. Eighteen and oh yeah, no, that's correct. Eighteen and eleven, twenty nine percent. Twenty nine percent chance of an untapped land. So about one in three. Yeah, Finn's looking great this match. Like I'm not playing him because I have better things to do with my mana, but uh... so I guess first I want to attack. I'm happy trading these Berk Striders. Even though it would make my bear a bit smaller, I want to clear the way for Ravenous Lindworm and a Berk Strider would give him good blocks. Why are you double blocking? Just in case I screw up and don't order them correctly. I guess that's good. That's a good enough reason. Uh, doesn't matter, green. And so let's go snow. Snow, snow, non-snow, enchant this land, green and fin. Ooh, maybe I should have played, sh played these pre-combat to give this more power. That was a mistake. Yeah, that was definitely a mistake. Missed two points of damage. That hopefully that doesn't end up costing us the game, but it's good to make notes of mistakes like this. 
sure. I don't mind that one bit. Hopefully he doesn't have another elf. Ooh, Lindworm and Rune of Flight. That's nasty. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't need to put this on, but he can make he can activate all three of these. So I need a way to close out the game. So in two hits, this would be 14 and he's at 15. But I still think I'm winning this race because I'm at 23. And he, he wouldn't be able to develop the board if he wants to activate all of his lands and hit me for 12. Oof. That's rough. So he can give minus three, minus three. All right. As much as I hate doing this, I need to... Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I calculated wrong. Rune of Flight doesn't pump power. I don't think it's terrible, but I'm really not in a position to attack. I'm not in a position to block because he can just sack and it'll give minus two, minus two. Even if I eat one of these, he's still going to end up trading a land for having a slingworm, so I don't even have good blocks. So what does that mean? That means I should just attack. He's playing black, so I'm gonna hold this forest in case he's got um, the card that uh, makes you discard two, and if you can't, you draw the net. Uh, I like that. He's starting off with a glimpse, so at least now nah, he can send fewer creatures. If I was him, I'd probably just fire up my, my Snowlands and attack with everything. Like, he may have just cost himself the game by doing that, to be honest. Because he's trying to find an answer for Lindworm instead of just hitting for 15. No, more than that, right? So it's 12. No, it's 14. All right, well, I have an answer for that. Should have probably done that after attacks, but it doesn't matter. I don't think it changes much. I was just so excited. <laughs> All right. Blade Walker's excellent. Like he changes the calculus on whether or not I live. So as long as they don't have removal, I mean, this is just an easy win. I guess Rune and Ravenous Lindworm is a thing. So are they playing five color snow? So blue, red, and black. So, so far we see three colors. We didn't even see the red splash, so we don't know what this is. Maybe he's just playing it as an extra snow land. So it's not a five color deck. Again, how, how good is Run Ashore? Not good. <laughs> not against, yeah, bouncing Burke Striders and uh, Priests is not something that's, that's gonna win you the game. We just need to run him over as fast as possible, to be honest. Like, if, there's, if there was a way to lower the curve, I would, but I think like we're already as low as we can be. And there was nothing with respect to enchantments. So yeah, a null's real. I mean, I love games where you can bring in a card like a null and it can have an impact, but it's slim to none. Maybe against like Woodland Nexus or, Nexus or whatever that card, the one that makes all your creatures change links and generates change links. There are some combos where it just goes off in a disgusting way. So again, we can keep thanks to Behold the Multiverse. So all the lands to the top that I can find. And I definitely want to make a land drop now. Ooh. Yeah, that's fine. 
that's that's fine. I can play action. I can actually play the tap land now. And next turn, we can play pack mate. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to play actually Spirit because I want to keep making land drops. Do we want the tapped or untapped one? Untapped. This time I'm gonna to remember to play my spells before attacks. Eh, it's not gonna make a particular difference this turn. So I guess I Berkstrider the flyer, or do we get aggressive? Berkstrider the priest and then get in for two and then we can broken wings at some point. Hmm. We also want to want to be able to play Linworm next turn if we can hit one more land. And Saruf's back mate increases the chances of that. I think with the life gain from the Lindworm, we'll, we'll be able to uh, buy back this three life that we're going to lose right here. And with the bounce spell, even if we don't hit a land, we can always go like uh, Broken Wings on a Raven plus bounce whatever they play if we think it's a threat. OK, that's not exactly something that we want to bounce, of course, but still. All right, so we actually got <laughs> it. It's interesting, like, would I, would I prefer a untapped land so I can play Lindworm now or a Mirror Lake so I can have three of them? You you know, I'll, I'll let you guess the answer to that. <laughs> so I have five. I can't really attack, so... I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass here. I'm just going to chill. Because I'm, I'm going to broken wings. I don't want to take any more damage from this. Because he can have what I mean, he can have like a counter spell from my Linworm and stuff. Uh, There's, there's ways that he can get me. Yeah, see, like, I'd, I'd rather have him counter that. Because now I can even just bounce this and he can't replay it for a turn. That's fine. <laughs> Still don't take any damage. And now the coast is clear for my six drops. That was, that's a reason to wait. That's a reason to not rush. So 
So of course you can have like a board wipe, that would be bad. But if he's playing Blood on the Sloan, he can't even bring anything back. All right, all right. So which one do you have? The Death Touch one, that's fine. That's not a problem. Sure. Well, another thing I can do is I can just clone Berkstrider. It doesn't change the clock too much. And then I can even... Um, I have two of these. I have two of these. That's so sick. I just realized I have two of these. It only taps it for a turn, but that still gives me a good attack. Oh, I should have made this green for snakeskin veil. But whatever. So much beef. Yeah, he's just dead, right? Oh, I didn't, you know what? I didn't even realize that the Berkstriders, they they net a point of power to the bear. So you're only losing out one point on not cloning uh, the, uh, the Linworm instead. Even though you're raking up those points of power on one creature, which is not, not as good because you want to spread it out, but there you go. All right. On to the finals for the second time in a row. So this is gonna be my last draft for today. If we win this one, it'll be 3-0-3-0 two times in a row, which is pretty good. So we can always ruin a flight the gold main pick. This is a keep, it's fine. We'll, we'll find our green mana. We're not playing three colors, so it shouldn't be particularly difficult. And we got quite a few shots of doing that. We might get run over by like an aggressive uh, Selesnya deck. That is a risk for sure. Mm, that's unfortunate. So I think I need to ruin a flight right now. This might be a quick one. That's brutal. That is just brutal. So was it a greedy keep in retrospect? We had, let's do the math. I mean, I'm gonna concede here in a second. So I have six forests, a snow covered forest, a veil, which means 20, 30, 30%. 30% to hit. Well, now I'm not dead on board. No, am I just dead on board? No, I'm not. I can keep this tap for a turn. Well, maybe somehow we survive.
Did we just pull a fast one? I think we may have. I think we may have pulled a fast one. Is this a mirror lake? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think we just pulled a fast one. I'm gonna hold full auto. This is this is these are the moments where you need to, where you need to hold full control because I don't want to misclick. This is my game to lose right now. Wait, why can't I say, ah, end of combat to main, here we go. And unfortunately there's nothing that we can like foretell, even though we're floating two mana, we pass. Wow down to one life that's pretty exciting whenever you can come back so now we don't want to see doom's car <laughs> that would be bad even though we have a uh, carve so that kind of plays around it i think our opponent now regrets um attacking that turn because he threw away a creature So now we need to decide what we want to attack with and if we want to re-equip this uh, Goldvein pick on like the 7-7. Seven, seven. So when he would get in for like 8 damage. I don't think there's any reason to send in anything other than a flyer, but if we're going to send a creature, let's send the one with the most power. So... And then we can play Spirit. And do we even need to play Guardian? Or do we play around the Sweeper? I don't think he can kill me. So let's just chill. Like, he needs to really find an answer for um, the quick gold vein pick, like if he's, this is a reason to main deck Broken Wings because you you will lose games randomly to setups like the one I have. Like just playing a Guardian Glade Walker wouldn't let me attack through what he has. I mean, I, I do still have good attacks with like a 6-6 six, six and stuff, but like I, I don't want to trade a 6-6 six, six for a 3-3 three, three because he can double block with the God's Hall Guardian. So, all right. Did not find an answer for the flyer. Uh, sideboarding. So I think run ashore is too slow. There's really, no, there's, I mean, why do I keep looking at the sideboard? Like there's, there's nothing I can do. I have no cards in my sideboard. <laughs> I guess the only value in looking at it is just to consistently evaluate your sideboard options and not to forget about them. Not exciting, but we're on the draw, so this is a keep. Question is like, do we want to foretell Augury Raven or even a Behold the Multiverse, or do we want to play Gold Vein Pick? Well, now that we got our third land, does this change anything? If we can 
top deck like a Flynn, we can play him, equip him next turn. So I think the gold vein pick is better. Okay, okay. Hmm. Now, this is not exciting, but at least this gives me more outs to win now. Oof, that's rough. That is rough. So I could play an Augury Raven and equip. That would give me a blocker. Very happy to see that. Nice. All right, so that stopped our opponent dead in his tracks. So now let's go multiverse first, making sure that the forest is up for Smokeskin Veil. Let's bottom both of these. We don't need any more lands and see what we draw. All right, so now we can play both Frost Augur, start using the ability even though it's like one in four. But it's still, you know, draw a quarter of a card a turn is still, it's not nothing. You'd pay four mana to draw a card if it's a free ability, right? Especially in a late game. Ooh, that's scary. That is a problem. Because now we can attack with everything and I have to block. So I have to shimmer, uh, I have to snake skin veil now. I guess I want to kill this pack mate with the uh, equipment, with the rune. That's a beating. Yuck. Not really what I need. Nope. This thing making two twos uh, is gonna put a lot of pressure on me. I don't think we can win. Like uh, if we, even if we top deck, top deck a lingworm, yeah, like with fall of the imposter, it's just a question of time till he, re till he removes it. If he doesn't attack now, yeah, now he's gotta attack with everything, right? Seven. And then he should, you know, if he plays a land this turn, he'll make a two-two. I have to, and I have to block. Can't block this because he's got lethal on board, and I'm tapped out. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So this is going to go one. This is going to go to the finals. This is going to go down to the wire, unless he makes a mistake. The answer is attack with everything. Yep. Yeah. Answer is correct. I wasn't tapped out. I had one island untapped, but that's not that's not doing much. Well, now if he's got nothing else, and if I get a Lindworm, six percent chance of that. 
actually so, so much for those discussions. Like I knew exactly what was on, on top of my library, duh. So I guess we're gonna put this on the horizon seeker. And then I need to keep this black to have a third blocker. So I'll black activate the ability to draw my quarter card. Quarter of a card, I should say. So I'll have to chump the 6-6 six, six with the Frost Augur. I don't see why you play that there. Or that. Huh, okay. Hmm. So this is going to exile my biggest creature, which is what I'll use to tap the crave. So that means I want to tap the flyer. All right, all right. Well, I'm amazed our opponent hasn't played a land. Okay, there we go. So am I just dead now? <laughs> That was, a, that was a cute dance, but I mean, our opponent's got a lethal threats and we have a pick, carve, and raven wings. So I think we're losing this race. Well, I guess I should have equipped this, but too late. I'm not really thinking now, am I?
I'm just kind of going through the motions here. I don't think I have outs. Wheel and worm. That's not it. We just got to win. It's as simple as that. That's that's just what we got to do. I got to keep it down because people are sleeping. So I'll finish the last game with uh, much less commentary. I don't think this needs any comments. Nice. So now actually what we can do is So far, like, uh, actually off to a very good start. A land would be nice, but a 42% chance to draw land. Nice. Well, I think that should do it. I'm throwing Berg Strider in front of any attacker because I have so much gas coming with uh, Mirror, Mirror Lake and uh, and the Worm. And it's so nice that they're both six. Yeah, that's not a problem. Well, don't get me wrong, like it's still a good removal spell. It's just not gonna help our opponent in this particular case. So yeah, I'm gonna do this before combat and I'm not gonna attack with the troll. Although do I even care at this point? No, it's gonna it's a better card. Like I'm so comfortably winning this race. Next turn, I could start threatening uh, indestructibility, and it's a much better attacker. 
than just trading it off for a random 3-2 here because they're not going to attack into a 7-7. Seven, seven. And even though they have removal, they're at 10 life and I have a flyer. They're not gonna, they're not in a position to race. Yep. If he's looking at his graveyard for this ability, that's really good. That's excellent. He's taking four in the air, so he has to. So both of these worms are are lethal. So he can double block one and chump the other, and then he takes another four from the ice high troll. No good blocks here. He he does have this, but it's too late to crack it. Like he's not gonna gain much life on the on the swing back. I understand why he tapped this, but he would have been better off keeping it untapped, because this way he's just leaving one less power and toughness on the table. I'm not sure if it would have made a difference. I think maybe, I don't know, but this, I'm happy with this. So now we pump Ice High Troll. Again, you play around, uh, there's no reason to play Pilfering Hawk. You play around Doom's Car. Not sure why he did that there. Because he's got enough power to block that 6 6 anyway. Uh, that was strange. Okay. All right, that's game. He has to chump, chump. Cool. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Two three nos in a row. Great way to end the week. That was fun. And like I said, um, if you need to play best of one, you're usually losing gems, even if you have a very high win rate. Whereas if you're playing best of three, like you net uh, 1,500 gems every now and then, like that goes a long way into stretching your gems when you need to play best of one or rank up. So see you next time. Take care.